from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of UiPath Live, the release show. Brought to you by UiPath. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube, and we've been covering the RPA market now for quite some time. UiPath just had this huge announcement, and we're going to update you on the space. As you know, we've been quantifying this with our partners at ETR. One of the areas that UiPath is obviously focused on, they're talking about scaling. You know, if you want to win in RPA, you got to scale. You want to scale, you got to have cloud. So Tarek Madkor is here. He's the Director of Product Management at UiPath. We're going to talk cloud. Tarek, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Dave. Good to see you as well. Yeah, so you, know, you guys had this huge announcement. Um, there were really four major kind of components, if you will, that you extended the, the core platform. You talked about more automation, more AI, smarter robots, the whole end-to-end, -end, when you guys talk about the, what sometimes is, gets a little buzzwordy, but that hyper automation, it's got to be end-to-end. -end. You've got to take a systems view, and then you got to put the tools in the hands of regular people. If you want to have a robot for every person, it's got to be simple. You've got to democratize uh, uh, RPA. So my question is, where does the cloud fit into all this? You know, the cloud is the one that wraps it all up together. So for us, it's very important to make it easy for people to start instantly. Uh, you, when, you, when you start to decide uh, that you want to do an investment in RPA, uh, you really want to get started very quickly. And the second thing is uh, you eventually want to grow that RPA investment and the cloud makes it super easy for you to scale that investment. So cloud makes it easy for you to start instantly and scale instantly. You know, when you think about the cloud, you know, it kind of started with, I guess it sort of started with, with Salesforce, you know, back in 1999, you know, kind of pre-cloud, but certainly, you know, so many functions and software areas have been, you know, cloudified. Uh, you saw it with email, you, 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 you certainly, well, you saw it with ITSM, which was kind of a, a heavy lift. Uh, you certainly see it with, with HR, uh, you've seen it with, with data protection and backup. You, you see, right. Do you see RPA as kind of the next big wave of cloudification? Well, I absolutely think that cloud is going to be very big in RPA. So from our perspective, when you start thinking about RPA, you're really thinking about automation. You want your automations to light up and to save you money and to cut time for you. And, uh, and that's the main thing that's going through your mind. What's going through your mind is not setting up infrastructure and you know, configuring machines and installing software to make RPA possible. So the cloud makes it super easy for you to just um, cut down that IT uh, infrastructure investment and go right ahead into what you really care about, which is the automation. So I think it's going to be big that you know, we allow you to just go directly to automation. If I want RPA, start thinking about the automations, forget the infrastructure, leave that to us. So there's obvious, there's, you, you hear a lot of narrative in the marketplace about cloud, cloud native. You see some companies are dogmatic. We'll, we'll yeah. never do on, had Frank Slootman on a while ago. He said, no, we're not doing on-prem. That's a, that's a halfway house. <laughs> you guys have taken a different approach. You obviously started <laughs> right, uh, on-prem and, and now you're sort of moving to the cloud. Why, what's your philosophy right. on that? You know, why wouldn't everybody do cloud? Makes sense. So uh, for us, we're very pragmatic about this. Uh, we believe that customers are at different stages in their cloud adoption. Uh, some uh, people are extremely cloud friendly and have already uh, uh, put in place uh, plans for making sure that everything is already on the cloud. There are companies that are cloud native that were born in the cloud, that if you go and ask them to install a piece of software on a local server, they will just laugh at you. So that's on one end of the spectrum. And you want to make sure that those people that can take full capability of RPA. Uh, on the other hand, there are people who are still you know, coming from on-prem servers, who are trying to move to the cloud, who have plans to move to the cloud, who would like to try some components in the cloud, but they still have some legacy systems that exist on-prem or a lot of systems that exist on-prem. And we want to make sure that those people are also able to take care of RPA. And on the other end of the spectrum, there are industries or some companies in some industries that just are not ready for the cloud at all. And from our perspective, we want to democratize RPA. We want RPA available for everyone. So it is uh, our philosophy that we're going to give you a multitude of deployment options. If you want on-prem all the way, we got it. If you want cloud all the way, we got it. If you want a hybrid uh, system, we got it. We're just going to make it possible for you and the deployment choice is your choice. And the experience on-prem and cloud, it's substantially identical. Would you say it's completely identical? What, what are the, what's the delta? 
that is absolutely one of our goals. It is absolutely a goal for goal for UiPath to make sure that if you are an on-prem uh, customer and you are starting to use some cloud, that your experience is seamless between on-premises and in the cloud. Uh, if you are a cloud customer and you have some components that still exist on-prem and you want to use them, it's very important to us that you have that common experience between both. So our software is designed with uh, a common experience at the core, and it's actually the same software that runs uh, a, from a user experience perspective in the cloud and on-premises. Now, obviously, a lot of the infrastructure is different and a lot of the security aspects are different, uh, but the user experience itself is you know, consistently the same and intentionally that way. So when people talk about cloud or not, they often cite you know, several things. You know, clearly latency is a factor. If your data lives on-prem, you know, on maybe you want to you know, do things on-prem. There's local laws, you know, data sovereignty. Uh, there's, there's corporate edicts. Well, hey, we're not going to the cloud now. Maybe with COVID, that's, that's changing somewhat. But so what are you hearing from customers just in terms of the rationale on-prem versus cloud, hybrid? What are some of the decision points? Those are all good points, Dave. That's exactly the, the kind of stuff that we hear from our customers. So I think the main things that we hear in terms of cloud is uh, about security. Uh, people, uh, rightfully so, when you start talking about cloud, uh, they start asking, can I really trust you as a vendor with my data? I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my sales data, I'm giving you my HR data. I mean, this is some confidential information. Can I really trust you with that data? Uh, so that's one thing uh, we absolutely at UiPath are taking care of with a large focus on security, and I can definitely uh, dive deeper into that if you want. Uh, in addition to that, um, uh, privacy and, and uh, data sovereignty and where data lies is a big deal. So from our perspective, uh, we host uh, your data as an enterprise customer in uh, three different locations. Uh, we host them and we have servers in the United States, we have servers in Europe, and we have servers in Japan. And as a customer, you get to choose where your data lies and uh, we keep it the way you tell us. Uh, so that kind of helps with data sovereignty because some countries, as you mentioned, or some companies, as you mentioned, really have strict rules about that. Also that helps with the latency aspects. So if you're you know, a customer in uh, Japan, you would really prefer to use our Japan data center as opposed to a, you know, a European center, for example. Do customers care like where your cloud infrastructure lives? Are they asking you about that? Do they? Do they, do they probe you on that? I mean, it's specifically in terms of your cloud partner, like maybe you could talk about yeah. that a little bit. Absolutely, people definitely care about who we use and where the data is going to lie. Uh, so from our perspective, for example, we're partnering with Microsoft and uh, all our infrastructure is built on Microsoft Azure. And uh, we use data centers from Microsoft Azure to, to host our stuff. And that's uh, really good for multiple reasons. Azure provides uh, some very good uh, uptime and uh, reliability guarantees. In addition to that, they have servers around the world that we can utilize so that we can expand. So for example, if our next frontier becomes, for example, in Australia and New Zealand, and we want to create a region there, um, being on top of Azure really allows us to go and uh, spin that off pretty quickly and, and uh, help customers that way. So, you know, one of the things about cloud is you can, you can experiment very cheaply and you can fail fast and then iterate. Uh, so one of the things that struck me about your announcement was your community edition. Uh, yeah. I always look for, you know, is there a community edition? Is that community edition free for life? Uh, is it neutered? <laughs> In other words, can I actually do anything <laughs> with it? Um, so I, I was happy to see that you guys had that. And I'm also happy to see, I mean, you've got, I think, you know, it's early days for your cloud. I think you said you have 200 enterprise customers, but you've got two orders of magnitude uh, greater than that from the community edition. Did I get that right? That's correct, yes, absolutely. So when you think about the UiPath Automation Cloud, it comes in two flavors. Uh, we have a community, uh, a one for community, and that is the free version. And it's, as you said, it's not like a free trial or free limited time or something. It is just free as in free, free forever. We're going to keep it to you. If, if that's all you need, just use it. No questions asked, you know, be happy with it. Uh, the community edition actually is, is a fully functional product. And it allows you to do, um, to get, two attended robots, one unattended robot. Uh, you get the option of connecting up the studio to studio, two studios for designing automations uh, to work with those. Uh, so it's, it's, it allows you, if, if that's all your automation needs is like small automation needs, just go ahead and use it. If you're a small company or an individual or a small team, uh, just use the community edition and you want to use that for production, just fine, no problem. You know, if that's all you need, go for it. Then the, and we have, 
tens of thousands of community customers that are actively using the product. I'm not talking about the people that have ever signed up and left. Those are a lot more than that. Uh, but I'm talking about actually actively using the product. We've got tens of thousands of users uh, that are using it every month. And uh, built on that same infrastructure comes our enterprise edition. And the enterprise edition is a, basically the same infrastructure, but it adds a number of capabilities that are useful for a larger enterprise. Of course, the most important of which is an uptime guarantee. So, you know, for the community edition, obviously, we keep the service up and we have very good response times. But uh, with the enterprise, you actually get an uptime guarantee. Uh, in addition to that, you get access to our support. So we have a dedicated support team that works 24-7 around the clock in multiple regions, and you get guaranteed response times with an SLA. On top of that, you get to be able to purchase as many robots as you want, and you know, the list goes on and, and on. And it's very easy to go, like you said, from playing with community, working with community, using that, doing a trial. It's instant as well. You just click a button, and all of a sudden, now you have five robots of each type that you can use for 60 days. And from there, you can just go ahead and buy. Well, now talk more about the uptime guarantee. Is that basically Azure's SLA? Sort of add a layer on top of that? Are we, you know, what are we measuring there? You could add some color. Absolutely, yeah. So our uptime guarantee is built on top of Azure, obviously, but we provide our own uptime guarantee regardless of what happens in the underlying system. Uh, so uh, from our perspective, uh, we guarantee that the service is going to be up uh, at a specific uh, you know, amount of time. So we measure the number of minutes every month uh, that the service should actually be up. And we measure the number of minutes that the service experiences any kind of downtime. And we measure downtime in multiple ways. So we do outside in testing of, you know, if you're a customer, are you able to reach our service or not? Uh, we do incredible detailed monitoring and reporting on the life of our service itself from inside in. And we look at any minute, any of those uh, services that we use, underlying services are not responding to customers, and we count those down as well. So uh, we guarantee that there's a specific number of minutes uh, that the service will be down and that's it. And so if I understand it, you're really taking an application view. It's not the light on the server. It's, it's the, it's, can I get to- You as a customer. Yeah, my, yeah. my service. From a customer you're perspective, it. are you able to reach our service and do what you're expected to do with it? That's what you as a customer really care about. And in turn, that's the right way for us to be measuring uptime. And Tarek, if, if I don't, if you don't hit that SLA, what, I guess free credits or how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. We have in our agreements uh, provisions for penalties on the UiPath side if, uh, if we don't hit that SLA. And similarly for support, you know, if you call support, uh, you are guaranteed, depending on the severity of the issue and the type of contract, we have two types of support. Uh, I, you know, how many minutes it takes us for somebody to be engaged with you uh, on that issue. And uh, we have very good numbers in hitting that SLA, and if we don't, there are also penalties on the UI path side for that. So we treat this to... as, a, you know, as a real enterprise service that, that you would expect. Yeah, great. I wonder if we could you get to take some examples. You've got a couple hundred customers. I think you mentioned Chipotle. Uh, was up and running, you know, very quickly. I think you had some other examples, but, but, but what can you share with us in terms of actual experience that your customers have seen? Absolutely, yeah. So we we've, we've taken a very measured and careful approach at actually uh, launching our service. So even though our service literally just launched uh, last week fully to the world, we have actually been uh, enabling enterprise customers. We've been we started a private preview with uh, four customers. Uh, back in April of last year. And then we expanded that to a public preview for any customer to try our service as is, no payment, but also no guarantees, back in, uh, I want to say June of last year. And then it took us all the way to December to feel comfortable that the service is at a place where when we launch it, customers are going to get an excellent uh, quality. And that's when we did a what we call a limited availability, where we started onboarding enterprise customers step by step we started with 10 we went to 50 we went to 100 and now we have a you know a couple of hundred customers that are already signed up using the enterprise product every day as a guaranteed service and getting the slas that we promised so uh, this was the time when we said you know what i think we've definitely been meeting our slas for you know five months running now we feel very comfortable to launch it for the rest of the world Hey, even if it's anecdotal, have you discerned an appreciable change in people's attitude toward cloud as a result of 
COVID? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's uh, just the aspect of working from home and having a lot of people just not available, either demand infrastructure or demand servers, uh, made a lot of people think about what is the best way to continue to run automation while they're at home. And obviously, there's nothing easier than granting access to someone uh, in the cloud to access a service from home than if you were to grant them access to an on-prem service with VPNs and all of that stuff. And then if you want to provision new robots and new machines, and you have to do that again on-premises, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a lot more complicated. So a lot of customers are really starting to look at the cloud. So many of the conversations that we would have, obviously a customer would come in and they would ask us about the capabilities of our system. They would ask about security, they'd ask a lot of things. And those discussions, you know, anywhere between, you know, a few days to sometimes a few months, you know, some customers would just iterate over those. The volume of customers that's asking about clouds is definitely increasing. Uh, good for us, obviously, the number of deals we're signing is also increasing. Uh, but most importantly, I think the, the number of customers that are benefiting from the value of starting instantly in the cloud and being scaled easily in the cloud is free. And you mentioned the example of, of Chipotle. And while that was an engagement that we had, obviously, before uh, the, the before COVID, um, you know, they, they, they were very impressed with what they were able to do. They, they came in and um, Colin and team had budgeted about two weeks uh, to get started and set up everything so that they can build on top of that and their automations. And uh, they chose wisely to start in the cloud. And as a result, they were done and all set up in one day. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a huge difference between what you're able to get in the cloud versus what you would do on prem. Well, UiPath is all about automation and, and so is the cloud. The superpowers of this decade, cloud, data, AI, you guys are you know, at the heart of all of those. So Tarek, thanks so much for, for coming on theCUBE and explaining sort of your cloud angle. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Dave. It was a pleasure to be here. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. More coverage on the RPA market analysis, sort of digging into UiPath's recent announcement. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. Keep it right there, I'll be right back, right after this short break. Thank you.